very frequent thoughts of quitting. The people who are literally, their thoughts are wrapped around, should I sell? Should I close doors? Should I quit? Should I give up? Should I get in another industry? And it's like plaguing their mind all day. I think that's a sign that you're burnt out. Cause like there's those thoughts would never cross your mind when you open the door. I'd say like probably year one to year three, it is that no quit is in my mind. When you're burnt out mentally, you're running yourself down physically, you're going to get sick a lot. And that could be a really big indicator. Like, hey, you have to slow down and take care of yourself, like mentally and physically. If you're more of an introvert by nature too, when burnout sets in, it can actually exacerbate that issue, right? So you want to isolate and escape even more. We will try to find distractions. Sometimes we hope something happens in our gym that's going to take our attention away, right? To give us something to do to escape. This is the Reinforce Your Gym podcast with your host, Dustin Vogel. This show is about arming gym owners with the tools, strategies, and lessons they need to take their business to the next level. That way, they can make a greater impact in their community. Now, let's get to work and reinforce your gym. All right, welcome gym owners to another episode of the Reinforce Your Gym podcast. I got my co-hosts on here. Jason and Kim, and we wanted to just talk about a subject that I think we don't talk about enough in our industry, and that is burnout. And so we want to just share with you our real life experiences with it, what we've seen with other gym owners, what they do, because you can't grow your business if you're burnt out. Like you can probably maintain it at a status quo. It could go backwards for sure, but I don't see a lot of burnout owners growing it. So that's what we got to do is we got to fix that first, and then we can fix the business because people follow the leader. If you're burnt out, I bet you're sending those vibes down to your team, to your clients, and then now it's just like this cancer that's kind of spreading everywhere. So we gotta we gotta fix that. So today we're gonna talk about burnout in general, indicators that show that you're experiencing burnout. So you can kind of tell, am I burnt out? How do I know? Of course, how to avoid it. That's the real thing we wanna get across to you guys. How to make sure that you're in it for the long haul and then it all starts with mindset, as you guys know. So it's changing from thinking about how do I get through today and this week and just like decades. That's what we want to think about is decades. So let's dive into it. Jason, I'm going to let you take lead, man. I know you got some good internal indicators that point to someone being burnt out. So why don't you share what those are? Yeah, absolutely, Dustin. I think this is a great topic for uh, gym owners. I think it. I've seen gym owners experience this within months of opening up a gym. But there again, if you look five, eight, 10 years down the road, I know Kim, Dustin, I know you guys have felt this. So when it comes down to this list here, we've all felt that burnout before. And so what we kind of want to do, like you said, Dustin, is kind of like, how do we see those triggers within ourselves? So not like we're going to self-diagnose this, but as we kind of go through some of these indicators, you're probably going to pick up on things and go, yeah, maybe I'm feeling that. So maybe that's burnout is, is what I'm feeling. So what I kind of want to do is on the first list here is like, okay, we look at some internal indicators that we might feel uh, as as we're owning our businesses, right? And there again, this is pretty common among a lot of entrepreneurs, right? So the first one really is emotional exhaustion, right? So it's about feeling emotionally unavailable as a result of expending just excessive amounts of energy, right? I mean, there's all only so much you really have in the gas tank, right? So you can have emotional exhaustion. And uh, another one I know I've felt that personally before is I'm naturally a very optimistic person, right? But sometimes you get caught in a pessimistic mindset or cynicism, and then it feels out of character to you. So you're like, man, why do I feel like that? I'm not a pessimistic person. But when you have those thoughts coming, that is really a, a potential sign of, of some burnout. Another one really is detachment and then disassociation. And you hit that right in the top of the call here was your team can feel that. Right. So once you detach or once you start to diso dissociate with the what's happening with your gyms, the in and outs, your team can sense when you detach 100 percent, no matter how you try, you try to mask it, they can sense it. Right. And of course, no one's just feeling drained before the day begins. Right. So even if you start thinking about your task or your day, you already feel drained. Why is that? That's a great indicator, internal indicator uh, of the burnout. And a, a great quote I heard from the author of the book I just read. Uh, Emily Bas Basteros, her she called the Sunday scaries, right? So even before your day begins or your Monday begins, you already have anxiety built up about work, right? You're already worried about what is Monday morning going to bring, right? So the Sunday scaries, 
But there again, you can have them every day. Your alarm clock goes up or maybe you're watching your alarm go off and you already have that pit in your stomach. That's a great indicator of what the burnout of the day is going to bring on you. Another big one is loss of motivation, right? So we have all this motivation. We started these businesses, right? Motivation was sky high. And then some days you might look at yourself in a mirror like, hey, where's the motivation? I've lost it. I know I'm saving lives and I'm making a huge impact, but I can't seem to find my motivation anymore. Loss of motivation, great internal indicator of, of burnout, right? And then impaired concentration and attention. I know I have felt this one. I, I intentionally, I naturally have a short attention span, but when it gets super short, I find that I just can't focus on tasks that I usually just knock out of the park, right? So I have impaired concentration, attention. I can kind of feel my mind kind of scatter around, right? And the next one, uh, there's feeling ineffective. Like we have those days where you're just like, man, am I making a difference? Like the, all of that kind of goes right, ties right back into motivation, right? Sometimes you just feel ineffective. Like, man, did the task I do today, did I even make a difference? So maybe you were going to lay there in the bed at night and be like, hey, could I have done more? Did I get enough out of this day? Was I effective enough within my business to my clients? So was I effective to my team today? And so once you have that self-doubt kind of creep in, that's a true, true sign of burnout. And they're getting each one of these bullet points. I know I have felt them before over the, um, you know, eight plus years doing this too. So there again, you guys have been in the game a, a long time as well too. So what can you guys piggyback on or add to that list here? They're looking, looking at like some internal indicators of, of burnout. Yeah. So Jason, I'll piggyback on your last one, um, feeling ineffective. It's also when that imposter syndrome starts to creep in as of not just can I do this, but should I do this? You know, when when you start, when you wake up or, or, you know, you're feeling overwhelmed in the middle of the day and all of a sudden that imposter syndrome kicks in of I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't be doing this. Why did I start this business? And then it just spirals out of control. And I think that is a serious sign of burnout because, look, you you were confident in the beginning. It's, it is always going to be a risk. But we went into this opening a gym being like, yeah, I'm going to rock this. And then all of a sudden, sometimes, you know, you start getting that self-doubt. So it's not just, am I doing it right? But should I? And another a big one for me that I know I'm burnt out is just task avoidance. You know, you have all these things to do. You know how important they are, whether it's something for yourself, your business, uh, your team. You're just sitting there staring at the computer like, I can't do this. Or you just start doing a million other things, even though you should be doing the thing in your brain's going, do the thing, do the thing, but it's that task avoidance. Uh, that That's a big one for me, indicator. I know I'm burnt out. I got to stop for a little while and concentrate on something else. Dustin, how about you? Because you've been in it a long time yeah. too. I think one, just by me having a lot of connections in the fitness industry, I think one that I see in others, but you know, it, it could be anybody, is just like very frequent thoughts of quitting, right? Like we all have that, but what somebody who has it once a month or someone that has it five times a day, like the frequency of quitting. Cause it's hard. Like I put a post up once in our Facebook group that said, if you don't want to burn it down at, at the end of every day, you're not entrepreneuring hard enough. And you know, it was, it was a joke, but it like every, like that was one of the most engaging posts I ever put up. Everybody was laughing, you know, commenting. I feel that way. And so, you know, of course I had those thoughts like screw this, throw a torch on it and walk away. But then I get my head right and it's like, okay, well, what I would say when I feel burnout is I have that very, very frequently. And when I'm not burnout, it's more infrequent. So like the people who are literally, their thoughts are wrapped around, should I sell? Should I close doors? Should I quit? Should I give up? Should I get in another industry? And it's like plaguing their mind all day. I think that's a sign that you're burnt out. Cause like there's those thoughts would never cross your mind when you open the door. I'd say like probably year one to year three, it is that no quit is in my mind. Then you get someone at five, eight, 10 years in, quit is actually popping in their mind a lot more often. And so I think that again, it's just because they're burnt out. Because if their business success was making a lot of money and they feel like they're making a big impact, they wouldn't be thinking that way. It's just burned out from years of struggling. And so they're ready to just hang up the boots and give it a, you know, give it up. So that would be the only one I would add on that link. But what, what are some, uh, I guess, if we said internal reasons, what would be external reasons then? Jason next. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we talk about internal indicators. That's everything I think like between the ears, right? Everything is kind of happening in our brain, but there again, we know that's going to bleed right into the physical self, right? It's going to bleed right down into the blood and muscles, right? So number one, obviously is physical exhaustion, right? It is physically exhausting and we're burnt out. We can feel the tension. We feel in our neck. We feel in the muscles, right? We feel tense and that's going to be lead to exhaustion, right? Because those muscles are tense and they're pumping all day. 
And so that's going to physically exhaust us like we've been working out all day long, right? So we have that physical exhaustion. Another one is going to hit big is going to be insomnia, right? So insomnia is going to be that external indicator. There again, it's pretty tied close to the brain, right? Because all of these thoughts are running through our head, the nerves, right? Are we going to burn the gym down today, right? So all that stuff is going to keep us up at night, right? So that's the insomnia side of it. Very again, it's going to have a really, really quick negative impact on your overall health. Uh, another one really is forgetfulness, right? We're going to start forgetting the things that we normally remember without an issue. And I know I have, I really have felt this one before where I forget things and I thought, wow, how did I possibly forget to do that? Right? So only because we have so many things pinging us, so we have forgetfulness lined right up there. And then, uh, this one here is really bleeds down, especially if you're more of an introvert by nature too. When burnout sets in, it can actually exacerbate that issue, right? So you want to isolate and escape even more. We will try to find distractions. Sometimes we hope something happens in our gym that's going to take our attention away, right? We hope a fire happens to give us something to do to escape uh, the burnout of the rigors of the day, right? So isolation, escapism, in this day and age, a lot of times we're going to go to social media, right? We're going to try to find a hobby, something that's going to allow us to escape, right? So hopefully it only comes to social media and hobbies and stuff like that, but sometimes it can lead to dependence on other, on other substances as well too. But typically it's going to be we're trying to get lost in social media, like how sometimes we might get stuck like an hour into some random reels of cab videos, whatever it takes. But sometimes we'll find that distraction just to get us away because that is the physical burnout. So we'll actually pick up the phone and do something physical with our hands and our body to help us escape because the burnout is just crushing us right now too. So those again, like I said, those are the physical things, the external indicators. Uh, there again, if you've been in business for a while, I know you felt a few things on this list too. So, um, you know, Cam, I loved how you added to that list, uh, up top here. So what do you think about the, uh, external indicator or things that you felt in all your years? Yeah. So all the things that you just went through, I'm like, yep, I have felt every single one of those. Some other big indicators for me, I'm a naturally very social extroverted person. So when I start finding myself practicing social avoidance, I know that's a result of me just being absolutely burnt out, you know, friends, family getting together on the weekends. And I know I'm like, nope, I'd rather stay home by myself. That's a huge indicator that I'm burnt out, you know, because I don't I'm not normally like that. So also going towards my team, they know if I come into the gym and I am quiet, something is wrong because I am never quiet. So that's another sign for me that I'm burnt out. Like immediately they're like, what is going on? because you're, you haven't said anything in five minutes and that's really unlike you. So that's another indicator. Um, and then uh, and then one that I know a lot of people experience, you might not even realize, is you're being sick a lot. Like when you're burnt out mentally, you're running yourself down physically, you're going to get sick a lot. And that could be a really big indicator. Like, hey, you have to slow down and take care of yourself, like mentally and physically, you know, and avoid all of that. So those are ones I know I notice in myself and in my world. Dustin, what say you? Yeah, I the distractions I like, I would add on there like sports. A lot of people escape into sports and like they'll find time to watch a three hour basketball game, but they won't spend three hours dialing for dollars for their business. And then another one is streaming. Like, you know, they caught a whole season over the weekend of a new show, but they didn't do any marketing planning for their business. So it's like these things are meant to distract you and they're meant to be entertainment and joy like sports and entertainment but like somebody can just dive deep into that and just disappear right like you said it could be substances social media it could be just any kind of vices so i would like caution people like try to like be out of the loop like not know what someone's talking about did you hear about this no i didn't that i'd rather you have that than like yeah i heard about that and i heard that i'm up to speed on everything i know what's going on politics sports news like i'm on top of everything well, what's the top of your gym? And it's usually like, no. So it's like, let's reverse that. Stop paying attention to all the sports team scores and stats. What's your business stats? Let's get those scoreboards on the board. You know, where are the jersey of your gym? That's all I would add on there. Yeah. And I think one thing to remember too is this is going to go through cycles, right? And there, you know, being an entrepreneur, you owning your own gym or whatever you're doing, right? It's always going to have a uh, really a cycle feel to it. So we're going to have those days and those successful months like you said we're going to work to exhaustion we're going to start showing the signs of burnout so you're going to start feeling those list of things that we just mentioned here 
Uh, so you're going to start showing the signs of burnout and you're going to, you're going to reach a breaking point. So something's going to happen where you just can't take the exhaustion. You're sick. You're going to start to realize those things and then you're going to have to make a change, right? So something happens, maybe there's intervention, your spouse kicks in, um, like a business partner, maybe someone's like, Hey, you're burnt out. So we do, we make a change. So we work to exhaustion. We show signs of burnout and then we reach a breaking point, whatever that breaking point is going to be change happens. So from there, life will start to calm down. And we start to feel good, right? We start to feel good. We're enjoying things again. The mind is clear. We're sleeping better. And what happens next? We feel like a million bucks. So what do we do? We start loading up our plate again. We start taking on more things at work with social, uh, social at work, everything. We start taking more things on because we feel good. And then we get stuck back in that same cycle. All right. So always think of, of burnout as really being a cycle with within the process too. And when we talk about burnout too, when we kind of kind of pull that cycle apart a little bit too, is really burnout is just not one thing. And I, I love how we can think of burnout in really three areas, right? Number one is going to be burnout by volume. So this is what we typically think burnout is. We think of burnout as what's happening from the nine to five. We get burdened down work typically, quote unquote work, right? So typically this type of burnout by volume is just the result of a high volume of responsibilities, right? Your compact schedule, very little downtime, right? We've jokingly say always drinking from a fire hose. You got information coming from you or to you from different sources, right? So that's burnout by volume. So those are things we think about like work type of burnout. But coupled with that, we also have social burnout. So we talk about social burnout. This is for someone who is the, the yes man, right? So this is for someone who's going to all the events. These are talking about interpersonal type demands that it's really, it exceeds your available social resources. So you will commit to things on a social basis that you physically don't have time for in the day, right? You're trying to say yes to everything, volunteer for everything, being available to clients nonstop. We're not separating those time frames, right? So I always say, quote unquote, like you're being everything to everyone, right? So that's more of a social burnout. These are interpersonal demands that you're trying to fulfill. And then the last one out is uh, burnout by boredom, all right? So burnout is uh, typically as a result of chronic disengagement or disinterest in the items within your life, right? So there again, we get caught in the mundane. That's still going to be a form of burnout. So if you're doing the same task repetitive over and over and over, that's when that burnout by boredom will come along. So how do we kind of cure that, right? So how do we challenge ourselves? How do we take it to the next level? Do we hire like a, a business coach to show you that there's more possible within your business, right? Like where would you want to be in the future? Think outside the box, right? Get out of that boredom burnout, right? So I, I wanted to make sure all listeners here knew that burnout just wasn't worth cramming into the nine to five with work. It's going to come socially. It can also come by boredom and the mundane too. So three types of burnout. What do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Um, do you feel like it can come from more than one source outside of the gym? Oh yeah, definitely. And even just kind of going back to in the gym, the fitness industry in general is a very social environment. You are on the moment you walk through that door, it's a show. And that's what we tell our coaches, right? When you're on the mat, when you're on the mic, it's putting on a show. You have to find your character. But just being there, even as an owner, you got to be on all the time. You're on for your team. You're on for your for your members. You're the problem solver. It is socially draining, you know. And as a social person, you can kind of feel bad stuck in stuck in that. But it is. It's it's socially draining. So you do have to stop and find ways to recharge your social battery. Like go and sit in a dark office for a little while and recharge, and come back out for the afternoon sessions. But yeah, I mean, I think that it is important to realize like there's all these different forms that if you're socially on all the time in the gym that's why I avoid social things sometimes because when you are that yes and now you're saying yes to all the social things outside the gym that social burnout gets pretty high pretty fast yeah I mean I don't have anything to add I think this is all really good awareness for people to have like what's the source of my stress or my burnout like why do I feel this way am I burnt out so I think we should now arm them with some tips. We could kind of just all chime in and share tips that we got. Like, okay, you guys now got all the tools to understand and self-assess, but what are we going to do about it? That's the D and me. If you guys follow the disc profile, like what, right? That's my favorite work. What, what are we going to do? So like, that's my favorite thing is to help people with the what. So let's get into that. So the first thing I would say is 
you want to set the right expectations with your with yourself, your spouse, your team, everybody around you. Kind of like do a quick reset conversation with everybody. Even for me, when I'm telling people about doing this LBD, to do it the right way, the little black dress challenge at the gym right now in the fall, you want to you want to kiss your kids goodbye. You want to kiss your spouse. I'm going to be a ghost for the next month. Like daddy, mommy needs to go head down and grind. And I might be needing to work weekends. I might need to work nights, but like now that expectation is set and they're not frustrated when that ends up happening. I would actually even encourage you to try to like set that expectation and try to get it done so you can still have family time. And, and then that way they're excited because they're like, oh, you said that that was going to happen and never did because you just got better with your time management or you grinded and got it done during the day. So we can have our family time. But I think a lot of times people are burnt out because their expectations and their and their reality don't match. And so they're like, oh, we're going to grow like crazy this year. And then it doesn't happen. And then they're burned out. Or this coach can handle that. And then they do it and they drop the ball. Or they're like, I don't need to work this much this week, honey. I'll be home a lot. And then they have to go in and cover evening blocks. And so there's all these mismatches of expectations. And when that happens over and over again, you keep, you start getting burned out. And so the first thing to remember is that this business is hard. Don't like try to lie to yourself or to your friends or your teammates or anybody and say, oh, this challenge will, will be easy, guys. Come on, I'll make it easy on us. Or like, we're going to grow and that's going to be easy. Growth is hard, but you know, also dying in, in business is hard. So like pick your hard, like, which one are we going to do? And realize that the hardest part of our business is it's very, like you said, Kim, people centric. There's team members that are people, there's clients that like, I don't know of a whole lot of businesses that see their customers as frequently as I do. It's like, it might be us and Starbucks, but even Target, if I love it, I'm going there once a week. Like I, so the team has to service me once a week. We're, we're servicing our clients three to five, something like six times a week. You're seeing these people, they become your friends. They become your family because of so much time together but more people is more problems. And so if you have 200 members, you have 200 problems walking through every day, all telling you someone's getting married, someone had a death in the family, someone got disease, someone let their job go, someone's got to move. And this is all being barfed on you all day and your team, you're being bombarded with problems. So it's a good right thing to set your expectation of like, okay, this business is hard. Let's talk about what are our hard parts about it. And then that way the expectation is set with me, with my team and my spouse, everyone, and, and just being truthful with yourself. Because again, I think burnout shows up when you just have this grandiose, everything will be perfect, we'll grow and it won't be hard. And I will have to, I can work a normal eight hour day and all these types of things. It's like, no, it's going to be hard. And so yeah. just talk about that because a lot of gurus on the internet will tell you that they have the secret to yeah. the easy business, like do it this way and everything will be easy and simple and, and stress-free. That's just not the case, right? The only people without problems are dead people. So as long as we're alive and we want to be living hard, we we know we're going to have problems. So that to me would be the first tip is like, get your mind right, set your expectations and get in the habit of speaking your expectations outside. Because sometimes you might be telling yourself in your mind, but no one else around you is having those expectations. So you got to tell them to your team, your clients, your spouse, yourself. And I think that'll really help a lot of people not be burnt out as much. Anything you guys would add on that? Um, I would add on that. I love the speaking them and speaking them to yourself is super important. You know, speak them to other people, speak them to yourself. And then just remind yourself that you're going to have systems and processes in place to hopefully, you know, avoid bad things from happening. But just setting the expectation with everybody like, hey, that's going to fail sometimes. Like we can have the most perfect systems and the most perfect processes but then you're going to have a client come in and like tear it all to shreds and it has to be okay. You have to just take a deep breath and figure it out and not let it overwhelm you. So I would just add that having that be kind of an extra layer of expectation, like you can prepare as best as you can, but you might not go exactly that way. And then I grew up with my dad who was a builder saying anything can be fixed. So I think just adding that into the expectations, I speak that to my team all the time. Sometimes they panic uh, about something that happened. I'm like, guys, everything can be fixed. That's it. Doesn't matter what it is, physically, emotionally, mentally, everything can be fixed. So let's just break it down. Let's go through what happened and how we're going to fix it. And setting up that expectation as well with people, I think is is super important. Uh, even with GR, you know, gym reinforcements, I'll set the expectation. Hey guys, this owner ran this offer and it crushed. 
So that data tells us that we have a better chance of succeeding at yours. But like, I want to see your expectation. It might be a flop. Your market might not be interested. Like, don't get upset. All we're operating from is feedback and data, right? 10 gyms ran this, eight of them did well. So if an owner hires us, we're going to give them the eight out of 10 offer versus blindly coming up with something out of thin air. And that's where a lot of owners go wrong. They'll say, hey, I, I like your offer you made but I'm going to change it and tweak it. I'm like, okay, perfect. Well, you're giving up my nine years of running that offer and you're you're doing it back at day zero. So you're going to have to figure it out on your own because that's not what I created for you. So setting expectations, like just basically being on the lookout everywhere to, to set expectations with people, I just think it's a good skill to build. So the next one I would go over is managing your energy and your state because you are the ultimate Duracell battery. Everyone's pulling from you, your clients, your team, your family. And that can be exhausting. That's why we're talking about it, burnout. So like, let's make sure your batteries recharge. We do it with our phone, just like clockwork. But like, are you doing best practices to keep your battery charged up? I would challenge you on that, right? So the gym owner becomes what I call the junk drawer of the business. Like all the little holes that need to be filled, you just do it all. And so it's like, oh, I'm not going to ask the coaches they coach. I'm not going to ask the cleaning person because they clean. But you have to do all the stuff in the CRM and you have to figure out this deal with the city and you got to call the guy to come fix the toilet and like you just become the junk drawer right that's the ultimate way to get burned out because you're just picking up whatever the business needs and your whole day is filled up with things you hate you're like man i got 10 things i got to do today i didn't pick any of them they were all forced on me and dumped on me as the junk drawer today's gonna suck and so you add up a bunch of those days and you'll be burned out in a few weeks and a few months because you had a few, a whole bunch of junk for days. You didn't do things like you wanted to do things that you were like, man, I was really excited to bite my teeth into this project or to work on my marketing or read the, you know, like some applications. Cause I'm a hiring, like these are things I was excited to do, but all these fires needed my attention. And so I was a junk door for today. Right. So the thing that is helpful for people to do, I would really encourage you to, to do this exercise is the good old four quadrants on a piece of paper where you write love at the upper left, like on the upper right, dislike on the bottom left, and hate on the bottom right, and just fill it in with the things that you do throughout the week. You know, I know it's hard to think of every little single thing you do, so I'd at least populate it with 10 to 20 things that you regularly do every single week. So whether it's like coaching sessions, sales, meeting with the team one-on-one, -on -one, team meetings, putting out client fires, talking people out of cancellations, things ordered for the gym, just like make a list of all the things you do and then move them into the four quadrants. And a lot of owners are surprised to find the majority of their days in the dislike and the hate boxes and very little. They're like, I got one thing under love, two under like, 10 under dislike, 10 under hate. I'm like, no wonder you're burnt out. We need to flip this chart. You need to have far more on the love and like and very little on the dislike and hate because then guess what? You won't dislike and hate your business. You'll love it and like it again, right? That's a self-auditing exercise. So I'd encourage everybody, like pause this podcast, get a piece of paper, four quadrants, do it because it will be powerful for self-awareness reasons. And that way you can get back to doing the stuff you love. So like, you know, an example, and I would even say there's even like examples where you got to like break it up into multiple things. So like, for example, if I'm making content, I like to write the content and create the content. Do I like posting the post or scheduling it for the future? No. So even in that, I would break those up into two different tasks. I'd say like, I love creating content. I don't like posting or scheduling it because I also like to make my content a good week in advance so that I don't feel like I'm flying by the seat of my pants. So that is even another way to think about it is like something needs to be done, but you can break it up into steps and move them around into the different boxes, right? Another one is like sales. I love sales more so when it's on the phone, Zoom calls drain the hell out of me, right? So it's like the same thing is being done, but how it's being done. You can even go into that level of awareness of like, oh, even coaching, like I did a few one-on-ones, it drained the hell out of me because I realized when that the whole session depended on that client, if they were really hard to talk to, this was going to be the longest hour of my life. You could pay me hundred dollars an hour. I don't want to do it. Group, I can move around. I can get my variety. I can talk to 20, 30 people. I could put on a show. So it's like both in situations I'm coaching, but how I coached one gave me energy, one took it away. 
So that's another way to think about it. Like first the tasks, but then even think about, is it this task that I really hate? Or is it one of the steps within that task that I hate and break that off and move that into the, the hate or dislike, right? So then you're like, okay, I get to do the love part of that task. I don't have to do every step of that, right? So to me, that helps protect your energy. And and most people just don't do this, like an energy off, right? Like we know about all the things, you know, I got to market, I got to sell, I got to coach. But it's like, wait a minute, what kind of energy are you bringing to, are you bringing the best energy to marketing, to creating your marketing, the best energy to your sales appointments, the best energy to your sessions, the best energy to your team meetings? No. So like we need to first get your energy right and then all those things will improve, right? And then there's communication with your team. So I, I also caught this with myself. I did a post a while ago, pretty popular, about the difference between on mission and off mission conversations. And I really get drained when we have off mission conversations. So I like to hear about people's life, but like when that's all we're talking about for hours and hours, like, you know, what's the, hey, did you hear about the weather the tomorrow? Did you hear about the weather for the weekend? Did you hear about the weather for next week? Like, okay, enough about the weather. Let's start talking about our clients, right? And again, the sports, did you hear how much he scored? Did you hear about their winning streak? It's like, who cares? These people will never meet you. Like, let's get on with your life. How are we making your life better? Just drama too. That's another draining one. Did you hear that these people got, you know, a divorce, you know, these, these celebrities, did you hear this client was like having a tip with this client, this team member's having a tip with this team member, you know, politics, did you hear it's not politics? All of these things drain the hell out of me. Like, I was like, none of this stuff helps my clients get results. All this stuff you're talking about, the sports, the politics, the drama, our mission is client results, challenges, marketing planning, improving our client experience, getting some more referrals in, helping our community get healthy and fit, educating people about processed foods and fat loss. Like now you got me energized. Now I'm on board. Now I'm, I feel like I'm in my sweet spot. So that's examples where I'm sharing with you guys, the difference between off mission combos and on mission combos. The thing that I would say for owners that are, you know, feeling burnt out is audit the percentage of how much is your team doing on mission or off mission conversations. If every time you hang with them, they're talking sports, politics, weather, drama, client arguments, team arguments, and like none of their time is being spent on client results, client experience, uh, marketing, getting people in through the door, that has to change. You have to start becoming the on mission, off mission police. And, and you can just pull yourself out. Hey guys, I wasn't aware of this. Now I am. I've noticed a significant amount of our time. We're not thinking about a mission or having on mission conversations. I want to, I want to stop that. So I just want you to know, if I hear that, I'll let it go for a couple minutes. If it goes past three minutes, I'm going to cut you off. And like, you know, basically resetting the standard, we got to get back to talking about our clients and our business and doing what we do best, right? When you're here, talk about that stuff on your own time. Am I the only one that feels that way or do you have you guys ever had to know if I know that's all like something my team's done? <laughs> you're you're such a D dust and I love it. So I being in high I am um have another uh, I guess way to look at it for me, like with because I'm a high I. So with with my team, yeah, the on mission is super important, but we do want to talk about those other things because it's how we connect as a team. The drama, I'm with you. We don't want the drama. I don't want to hear about it. We don't need to create drama. Like we have a very strict no drama policy. We have, if we have clients that are starting drama, we shut it down right away. But we do spend, and I know we do with our team in in GR too, our wins, you know, for the day or the week. Like for me, it's not so draining to talk about other things because I think it gives me an opportunity to connect with the team and get to know them more. And we all share. I also have a very, you know, we have a very close knit team. So we like sharing those, those things. Um, but yeah, you don't want it to be the entire meeting. Like you want to be able to then transition that into talking about the mission, talking about the gym, talking about future plans. How are we going to make it better? But I probably spend a little more time on that personal stuff than, than you do. And, and what I'll say is like, there's a time and a place like we're out, we're having a team lunch. I want to hear all about their life. Like we're between sessions. I want to hear nothing at that moment. It's like, it's all, I'm, I'm in the zone for clients. So it's like, yeah, I didn't add that as like time and a place because I'm very much involved in, you know, my team and I know about it, but I definitely want more of it to be client discussion. 
Jason, how about for you, man? Any input on that? Um, yeah, two takeaways. Um, I guess the big thing is if you ever get on a coaching call with Dustin, number one, don't bring up the weather, I guess. That's a <laughs> issue. <laughs> um, but no, in all theory, I love it. Uh, really, if you're running the meetings, I right, if it's in the gym, right, that's all centered conversation, right? And um, so if you don't run L10 meetings, I mean, those are great frameworks. It keeps the bumpers on. It keeps everyone in lane. So that's a big thing is you never want your meetings that are in the building that are about clients. Those are client-centered meetings. Keep the bumpers on as a leader. Keep them in the lane. Only allow like five minutes in a section, for example, if you're doing um, L10 type meetings. Just keep everyone on task and uh, they're getting in. Everyone's literally in the same boat, rowing the same direction. But yeah, outside of the gym or, you know, post-session, you know, you'll find times where you're going to have those nice, loose conversations with your team because that's where you want to be the human uh, interacting with them. But um, yeah, 90% of your communication with your team has to be client-centered. Say the 10% for the fluff, um, you know, to be uh, just a person or a regular person with them too. But um, yeah, find spots for those type talks. Yeah. Gym owners, let's be real. You don't love lead follow-up and that's why I started Gym Reinforcement so you can pass it over to us because that's probably not why you started a gym. That's not what you love to do in business is to chase leads down all day long. Well, hey, hand that over to me and my team of remote sales reps. We're gonna text them, call them, email them, social media, DM them. We're gonna do all the channels so that you don't gotta worry about it and you know they're gonna get reached out to quickly. And that is what we do at Gym Reinforcements. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of AI and bots and automations out there that can reach out to your leads, but let's be honest, it's not very good and people could tell right away. You probably would rather to have human to human customer service from start to finish, meaning from when they opt in to when they get serviced by your coaches, we wanna have that exist throughout the whole client journey. So let us step in, let us engage your leads, let us sell them for you. And that way you can do what you do best and serve them and get them results. So if you wanna book a call, go to gymreinforcements.com and we'll talk soon. All right, well, we'll continue on with more on this is like protecting your energy, like, we see it with GR, like we all have gym owners and we immediately know they're not going to be a good fit for us long term because they'll come in and they're negative. And I know I've even said like, let's, let's even try to screen these guys and not even let them in. But like sometimes they'll start positive and they'll turn negative. And so a lot of times the thing that I look out for is them kind of playing the blame game. I've tried all these agencies and so you're number six or something. I'm like, we don't, let's not work with this person because there's only one common denominator. It's them, the owner. And so that they just red flag themselves that they are someone who's like a hyper buyer that skips around a lot. They have no commitment. They're almost like a client that joins, a, you know, six gyms in a year. And you, you, they always will talk smack about like, well, these guys had no attention to detail and these guys move slow. And these guys, I didn't like the way they did things. And like, okay, so there's a common denominator. It's you, the owner. At some point, you got to take personal responsibility. How have you been communicating? How have you been doing things? So, you know, again, I know we're talking energy and mindset. If you come to the mindset of something of like, everything doesn't work and you're just the next thing on my war path, we're not going to work because you already have that mindset that no agencies work and no one will work for you because you're a special snowflake and your area is special. And so we really screen for that because that is something we don't want to have in our gym and i even look out for it or we would gym reinforcement i look out for in our gym they're like i've tried everything i've tried all the diets and you're just the next stop that i'm gonna say doesn't work and it's like how about we just don't sell you and we don't have you black us to a bunch of people do the things you, you guys love to keep your energy high if you if you're a gym owner that likes coaching sessions keep coaching sessions nobody should guilt you to stop coaching um you know like if that brings you joy and and don't let someone say you should be off the floor like no because then you actually lose touch with your clients and you lose touch with what's going on in your and your service delivery and uh that actually can bite you in the butt so i really recommend like for most owners stay on the floor even if it's like part-time because it's what made you start the gym and you know again if you have a coaching background and that's not something you want to get away from because that's honestly when a lot of owners i find get burnt out is they are like 10 steps away from what got them to start the gym. Like they're so far removed. They're like deep in the business rabbit hole and they do zero anything coaching related. They start feeling burned down, hating their business. And it's because they're doing a bunch of things all day long they hate. But if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum, you're like, I love the business side. I don't like coaching. Then 
hire people to coach and and then just do business all day and do marketing, right? So it's like, and there's plenty of blends in there, 50, 50, 80, 20. You don't have to do hard right and hard left. Pick one of them. That's the beauty of being a business owner. You get control. You get to build out your perfect thing. And then everyone has to build off of that, right? Like you're first, you get the dream day, you get to build it. And then everybody's other roles are built off of that. But what tends to happen back to that junk drawer is you put everybody in the position of their dream day and then you take the leftovers. And then that's what makes you the burnt out, right? I think a gym owner's happiness is linked to two things. It's spending time on what you like, but also I would say a sub category to that is how much time. Because you could say, I love coaching, but I'm only doing two hours a week versus somebody that's doing it 20 hours a week, like that person's gotta be way happier if they love coaching, right? If someone loves marketing and they only get to do it two hours a week and then the other guy gets to do it 20 and they both love marketing, they're gonna be, so it's like do what you love, but also maximize how much time is spent. And that's back to that exercise, the love, like, dislike, hate. So that's part one of what makes a gym owner to be happier, spending time on things you actually enjoy that fill you up, they give you energy. And then the second one, I believe, is progress. Tony Robbins says motivation equals progress. And so when we're not progressing, it's natural for motivation to wither. That's why I say in the beginning when the gym's open and you've got the skyrocket of growth and new members, it's progressing, you are motivated. And then you fast forward eight, 10 years later, and it's not progressing, it's stagnant. Surprise, surprise, you lose motivation because you're not seeing that growth trajectory anymore. So when you have progress and you're doing the work that you love, that to me is the combination to be a happy gym owner. Cause then we feel like the work we do matters. It's like, I'm impacting more people. I'm making more money for me and my family. And I get to do it by doing the things I love. I've hit the lottery, right? Like life is good. So that's what we want to get you guys to. That applies to you, but also the final point I'll make on this is it does drip down to your team. You know, you got to manage their state and their energy as well. Like if a team member comes in there in a bad mood, I'm like, I got to have a one-on-one combo with them. I got to, I got to turn that around. I got to be their mindset coach because if they're in a funk, it's going to trickle down to the client. Clients will read it on them in a heartbeat. So I got to really go and coach them around that. They applied for a job. So they got to do what you, you hired them to do, but there might be little things in there. You might be able to take off their plate. So I even say, maybe have your team do the love, like dislike and hate. And maybe you're like, I asked this coach to do lead follow-up and then they put it on their hate box. Oh my God, what have I done? Like get them off that as soon as popular. And it, and then I found out my, my follow-up's been sucking. Well, now I know why I got to the bottom of it. When you ask people to do things, make sure they're going to bring the right energy. Can they do it? Yes. But what energy will they bring to it? That matters so much, right? So it's like, again, sometimes a person will say, should I have a client coach a session or become a coach? And we've hired co- clients, but it's like, they just want to throw them in real quick because a coach called out sick or something. And it's like, can the client do it? Yeah. But like, what kind of energy will they bring untrained? Probably not going to be very good. So think about that, you know, or having a coach say, yeah, can I follow up? Sure. But am I going to kick it, the can and, you know, kind of avoid it because I don't love it? Like that, what kind of energy they bring into the task, right? Anything else you guys would add on energy management, state management? I think um, just the importance of delegation, you know, it's I didn't realize how important it was to delegate things out until I started doing it. And it was my team leaders coming to me and saying, delegate, give us these things to do. You cannot do everything. And I think that's important as a business owner to remember as I did everything with my first business. I had a, a pet sitting company when I opened the gym. I'm like, I have to do everything. You shouldn't be doing everything. Dustin, you say it all the time. We talk about in JR, putting people in the right seat on the bus is so super important because you can't just continue to do everything for your business. So you have people on your team that would love to take certain tasks also off of your plate, and they may even be tasks that you don't like to do at all or you're terrible at doing. Maybe it's stuff you like doing, but you're like, you know what? I just don't have the time to do it. Like, It's okay to delegate, and actually you should do it. And I think it's really hard for us to to wrap our heads around that because we feel like we should just be doing everything. But no, it's okay. Delegate. You should be and put people in the right seats. Yeah, absolutely, too. And I think it's, an, I mean, I speak to hundreds of gym owners across the country and it really comes down to that. I always say, hey, who knows who's doing their lead follow-up right now? And it's always going to be a coach. They're always going to say, one of my coaches is doing lead follow-up. And uh, they're going to be doing this a lot of years. And I would say that's the unicorn. If you find a coach that can do an effective job, like that's that with high energy and sell, those are unicorns. 
like handcuff them to the desk because you'll never find another one, right? So make sure you find it as an 80 20 principle. If they're really, really good coaches and they're delivering on the floor with uh, the clients, if you pull them off, slow them down and put them in front of a laptop and say, do lead follow up, it's outside of their energy level, right? And so it's not going to be energetic enough for them. So, yeah, exactly right. That's not going to be their bag. Send me hate mail. I don't care. Prove me wrong. But there's not a lot of coaches out there that can really deliver the energy that's needed for lead follow and sales and things like that. Absolutely, man. Um, well, I mean, kind of like continuing that on, I know I said coach your team around their states. Well, let's just pick the right people to come on board the team beginning. And that's it's you a big headache because I I know when I've had the most joy in my business, and so that's like another tip is like work with people you love. So the most joy I've had in my business was when I loved our team and the, the times that I did the things that were on your list, Jason, like, you know, disassociating, disconnecting, kind of like hiding out. I just didn't like the team that we was working with. So I'd find reasons to cancel a meeting or like not be around them or like, Hey, I only want to meet with the two of you and not these other two people. And it's like, I was doing all these like dancing around. I was like, I run this place. Why am I the one that's kind of, I was dodging, dodging, but you know, it's because I'm sure a business owner can kind of like sympathize. They were good for a while, but then they like turned into a bad apple at some point. Some sort of life change happened. Their mindset changed. Somehow I became the bad guy and, you know, things went sour. So, I, I mean, I can literally remember like losing sleep. Like Mary Beth would wake up 2 a.m. and she'd see me like up and she's like, what's going on? Like, I'm thinking about the conversation I had with so-and-so today. I was like, I can't get any sleep. And so I definitely was a victim of that insomnia. And then they got out and I, I slept like a baby. And so it's like, that definitely impacts me because I am still very like, I think I'm a high D, like lowercase I, I, I do want people to like me. I do, you know, want to, you know, have positive engagements with people. And so when, when somebody's really hurt or they say something really hurtful to me, it does impact me. I lose sleep over it. So it's like, we should just not work together. Like we're literally causing each other physical pain and losing sleep. And like, like, why are we like, there's lots of fish in the sea, like go find another job. Right. I've just learned through many hires. I've, I've trained my eye and I've tried to like SOP this as best as I can, but I don't know. It's just like a gut instinct. I think business owners have, maybe it's because our money's on the line. We're going to actually have to pay this person and put up with them and possibly get sued by them or who knows what, like there's just higher stakes. that pulls out more of our senses but like i could just catch little things that like my team can't no matter how much i sop it out and so i've just developed an eye to find the right team members so i kind of like wanted to just share some of the things i look for because i find that like if we are aligned on our values like who we are as people and character then we're going to be a good fit and we're going to be able to work together but if any of these things are off we're just not a good fit to work together. it doesn't mean you're a bad person it doesn't mean i'm a bad person we're just we shouldn't work together like just that's it. We should, we can still be friends even, but like, we just can't work together. Right. So the biggest one for me is emotionally stable. And those ones that I lost sleep, the person got really hot or really down and they were just all these ups and downs. And I just need this even keeled person. That's who I like to work with. Emotionally stable people. A second is they're resourceful. They tried to Google it or YouTube it at least before they asked me, they weren't trying to send little basic questions like, Hey, how do I get into Spotify? It's like, get out of my house, like get out of the gym. If you can't do that, you're done. Resilient, meaning they, they probably went through some tough stuff already. And so like they kind of got some thick skin and they can put up with some crap and it's like, cool, you're my people, right? They tend to outwork their peers. If you ask them, who's the hardest worker amongst you and all your friends and they say me, you're probably my kind of people. But if they're like, oh, so-and-so is better than me and this person works harder than me, then you're probably not you know, the right person. Um, they're coachable and they actively ask for feedback. So, you know, being coachable is good, but then if you're also not seeking out getting coaching, everybody can claim they're coachable, but the real coachable people seek out coaching. And so that that's that's the ultimate sign, right? Is that you're coachable. And then the last thing I'd say is you take fast action. That's where a coach enjoys coaching you and giving you mentorship and giving you advice because they're like, oh, when I say things, you actually go and do it. I'm just going to keep doing that for you. And then you benefit because you get their best advice. They're not holding back the people that you're like, I said things and they, they haven't done it. And this is my third time telling them, you're like, I'm actually going to start biting my tongue. Cause like, it's a waste of my time. I'm going to give them short answers. I'm going to try to wrap it up quick. Cause this person doesn't take action. Right. 
And so we've all probably had talks with gym owners that it's like, I told you this three times already, you still haven't done it. You're not very coachable, right? You're, you don't have a fast action mindset. So these are things that I look for in my team. Is there anything you guys would add to this list that you look for when you're making a hire? I usually look for people who um, are also adaptable, you know, because things change really quickly in business and you don't want a team of people that are going to freak out. Every time you make a change, you want a team to say, all right, how are we going to do that? Let's go. We're going to rock it. Even if you're a little nervous about it or they're a little nervous about it, they can just take that change and then rock with it. Um, attention to detail is another one for me. I'm that person that walks around the gym and is like, the plyo box is upside down. The weights aren't facing the same way. So I want them to really watch and make sure that they're you know, picking up the pieces of the little tissue that's on the mat and not just like walking around with blinders on. That's super important to me. And then the last one is just like, if they come in on their very first interview day and they're talking to clients and they're smiling and they're, you know, being, are they like doing that? Are they being social? Are they just hiding in the corner? If you're hiding in the corner, we're probably not going to ask you back. But if you're making an effort to get to know people and you're excited about it, like all the coaching skills can come later, but you got to at least be friendly with people and, you know, want to talk to them, make a difference. Um, Jason, I'm sure you've got quite a few more to add to that list. What 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 else would you say? Oh, man, this should be a whole other podcast. Um, but <laughs> uh, <true>. number <laughs> next, I mean, one for me yeah. that I, 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 I know I'd share with you, Dustin, is uh, using trigger words. I Everybody and nobody. When a coach says everybody and nobody, I tell you what, that is like just makes my eye close. It's really, really tough for like, you know, everybody is upset about the new session time or nobody likes this or everyone's not going to do this. And I hate those broad generalizations. Like nobody likes a 6-3 time slot. I hear those uh, trig those words, those extreme words. Those are huge triggers for me. Um, there's nothing that makes my blood boil. So that's worse than talking about the weather to me. That is the the extreme words. Um, everybody, nobody, man, I have a hard time, you know, I'm not that person. Um, I need specifics. I mean, I am the owl. I need to know the details. So, um, yeah, that's my huge thing. You got to just be on that side. Extreme, extreme doesn't work. Yeah. And, and, you know, like you can get that on an interview and they say like, everybody loved me at this job, you know, like, uh, it's like everybody. Right. So, uh, that, that, those types of things, you know, uh, nobody would have a bad thing to say about me from the other company just like all those types of things when you're doing an interview process, right? I got along with everybody in the company. Okay. So like we, we can kind of sense that, you know, you're using this, these words a little too loosely. Yeah. I'm a big believer that the enemy is vagueness. The ally is specificity, right? The more specific you can get, the better. All right. I'll do one more tip. And then Kim, I know you got some, and that's just, if you're burnt out, get around other high performers. Your cup is obviously drained because maybe the people you hang out with are not the people who are pushing you in business. Maybe they're your customers, right? They need something from you. Your team needs paychecks. They need vision. They need to be told what to do. They need training. Everybody need needs needs, but when do your needs met, right? And I'm not just talking about like workouts and, and money. I'm talking about like excitement, energy, enthusiasm, friendship, community, right? Like as a business owner, you got to seek that out. You got to put yourself in those right rooms. So when do you get your cup filled up? Sometimes the business doesn't need you to do more for it. it it's actually like the, the heart grows fonder with, you know, like separation, right? Business actually needs you to take a break. You, you know, you're married to this thing, but you need some alone time. So it's like, get on a plane and go to an event and you'll come back. And I promise you, you almost like miss, it's like missing your kids. Like, oh, I missed you, Jim. Like uh, it's been a week. Like, oh my God, I miss you. I miss the clients. Cause you're there too much. You need, you need a break from it. And then like the clarity will come because you, I, I don't get a lot of big ideas in my gym. There's somewhere I'm working out, I'm in the shower, I'm, I'm on a plane. It's because the, the gym is where I, you know, it's a place you go to work. So all I see is like, oh crap, I got to clean something. I got to do something. I can't dream big. That's why you want to go somewhere else. Right. And so I would say if you're feeling burnt out, get around people that will fire you up again. Right. It's the wrong thing. You're burned out. Let's get fired up. And so there's little things you can do to change your inputs like this podcast, right? You're, you're hearing gym owners speaking some energy into you, get you fired up, but let's be honest, it's a little dribble, right? And then books, that's a little dribble of excitement, but then you get in with people. I think that's where the most energy comes is masterminds, live events, mentorships, where you, you have kind of connection. You get to like get a bite to eat. You get to catch a workout. You get to sit next to buddy. You get to swap some phone numbers. Like you come home with the craziest amount of energy 
So if you go to it or if you can afford to do, like send your team to these things, those are always the biggest game changers. Like those bring the team fired up. And so if all you're hearing is negativity, like your spouse is afraid of the bills are piling up or your team members, you know, need you to help them with something and your clients are like, can I have a minute? I want to go over my nutrition. And it's just pulling, pulling, pulling. You know, you got to get that external support, right? You need to get that, that cup filled up and make sure that you're going to other places um, that will do that for you. Did you have anything you add to that one about getting around high performers? Yeah, it also really helps to create a support system. One of the best things, and I say this to myself every day, and I say it to other owners on a daily basis, one of the the first things that I ever heard from another gym owner, one of the best things was, you know, follow the people who have been where you are and who are where you want to be. And, you know, and that's the benefit of getting around other high performers, people who have been in your shoes. They Everybody started somewhere. Matt talks about starting you know, he was in his grandmother's basement and his first place was super small. And we all have our origin stories. Everybody's been there. And, you know, the people who are now doing here, you look at them and you're like, I want to be where they are. Just follow them, get with them, make friends with them, talk to them. And that's why I'm sitting here today. Love yeah. it. Okay. Well, Kim, I know you had some other tips to add to the list. What are what are some tips you have for burnout gym owners? Um, time management, just setting boundaries and realizing the importance of setting work time and then sticking to it so that you can then allocate your time for personal time. And that's something I know we've all been guilty of is just locking ourselves in the office and being work, 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 work. You have to set a stop time. Set a st- We set start times. We don't set stop times. We have to set that time, decline meetings. We don't like saying no. We'll take meetings all night. But then, you know, that's going to lead to burnout. Your family's going to get upset, your spouse. So, you know, you have to plan that time. And then along with that is breaks and downtime during the day. Like I know we can all do it. All three of us, I'm sure we have sat that in our computer and just gone all day. Did you forget to eat? Did you even go to the bathroom? Did you stand up for five minutes and stretch your legs? Like you have to plan those breaks in, you know, when it comes to time blocking and, you know, scheduling and all that stuff, um, stuff in. Do you guys have anything to add to that like little section there? Yeah, I think time management expectations. I know we touched on it earlier in the call here, but um, set expectations early on with your clients too, right? At orientation, right? You say, hey, you know, any email is going to get response in 24 hours the next business day. We tell people, hey, if you text your coach at 830 at night, you're not going to get a response till the next business day. So set those expectations with your clients right away. And that will really, really go along to avoid burnout. So you not feel like, right, you're not an EMT, you're not a paramedic, you're not on a 24-hour call here. So set expectations with your clients early on so they know what to expect and the potential uh, window of replies. This way your clients know that if you text A30 about a certain type of chicken to buy, you're not getting a response to the very next day, okay? So set that expectation with your clients. That will help relieve burnout in you and your coaches because your coach is going to feel burnout on high traffic challenge times during the year with nutrition coaching. So it'll help them help you. And then that stress level comes down across you and your staff. Yeah. Yeah. I think for kids, for me, like they are like, they'll, they'll just chew me out. Like if they're like, you're always working like that, they're like my barometer. The kids don't mention it. I'm in a good place, but if they're always razzing me and on my butt, like, all right, Dustin, take a look at your calendar. Like, and then also I'll, I'll really go hard on like giving them some personal attention. Like that's something I've learned from multiple people is they always reference have one-on-one times with individual kids versus always being together as a family. Cause it's almost like, yeah, I give my clients plenty of attention in my boot camp sessions with 30 people. Like, yeah, they all have access to me. I talk to all of them, but like no one really gets one-on-one. So it's like, that's kind of where I try to like, and then of course, one-on-one with Mary Beth, we'll have date night, stuff like that. But for me, they're, they're my barometer. And I, I think I've gotten into a really good place. Like I know what I need to do. I have a hard cutoff to kick Kim like 6 PM is like, to me, closing up shop. Like daddy's done. I've been at it since 5 AM. I put in a long day of work. I should not have any guilt about turning it off and then spending time with the family. So that's like my hard cutoff. Yeah. And I think, I think going along with that is scheduling time to self-reflect. Like do self-check-in, self-evaluations. Where are you? Like you said, your kids are your barometer. You also want to be your own barometer. Like schedule regular check-in sessions, even if it's just a few minutes in the morning while you're brushing your teeth. But mentally prepare yourself to check your state of mind. Um, And if you're waiting until you're in the thick of it, it's already too late. You're going to have that freak out, that panic attack, that burnout. 
Um, so definitely scheduling that. And then also scheduling a long-term vision check-ins. Like things can change and change over time. You opened with one set of goals in mind. What your vision is, what is your 30,000 foot view? Is it still that or has it changed? Like I think it's really important to do with yourself and also with the team we do with my leadership meetings. I, I tell them this is our 30,000 foot view. And if anything has changed, I tell myself it's changed. I tell them it's changed. And then it's also going to see like where the focus should be. Where should you be spending your energy? Are you spending your energy, you know, your time and energy on things that like maybe you're not on that track anymore and you're just doing that thing because you think you should for your original goal. But if your vision has changed, then you need to switch the strategy. And uh, my last and final thing that uh, I think everybody needs to hear is take vacation time. For the love of God, take vacation time. You know, my first business, I literally did not take a vacation for four years. And I was just an emotional mess, you know? And I think it's, we think as business owners, we're not allowed to take time off for ourselves. We feel guilty if we step away for a day. Oh my God, it's early for like a week or two. But I think it's really important to make that time we expect, I hope, we expect and want our team members. I want my team to take vacation time. Dustin, I know working with you, you're really um, big on that too. Like take vacation time. You'll force people to do it if they're not because you know that we're going to get burnt out. But then we don't do it for ourselves. So take your vacation time. It's okay. That will give your team an opportunity to shine as well, which if they're really like bought into your vision and mission, they want that opportunity to take some charge of things and to shine and show you that they can do it in their absence. So I think it's really important to allow your team to do that as well so they can say, hey, I got this. You go and take that time for you and your family. So um, we're all human beings. Just remember that. Oh, so that's a big thing to remember is no client will quit your gym because you took a vacation. All right. That's the big thing to remember. The sun will come up. Like I just got the, I got back from a nice vacation and I checked in with my coach and she said, yes, Jason, the gym is still standing, right? And so that's the level of trust we have, you know, with, with our coaches. So no client will quit because you took a, a vacation that week. So that's the mindset you have to operate with. The place will still be there. Workouts are still going. Lights are still on. Relax and take that time. Yeah. I, I was just going to add, if it does make you feel bad, like just pick a time that, you know, the gym's slow, like that, like there's probably not going to be a lot going on. Like Thanksgiving week. Is anyone like slammed Thanksgiving week, Christmas week, even 4th of July week, um, before kids go back to school, like late July, early August, anybody like crazy slam. So it's like that way I come back refreshed for right when we get into growth season. You know, it's like when I'm going to go into the hard fall, like challenge or the new year or spring, like I'll always take a challenge or I mean a vacation backed up to that so that I come back renewed and I'm ready to grind. And I like, I don't need a vacation for the next eight or 12 weeks because I planned it at the right time. So like, look at your calendar when you're grind times and then plan a vacation before that. So that expectations are like, honey, we came back from the week. I gave you and the kids. I'm going into business mode now for the next eight weeks. Like just set expectations. Right. So, well, I think we gave plenty of tips. Hopefully again, gym owners, you guys got lots of advice. If you're feeling burnout, out, um, reach out to us. You know, again, we all enjoy engaging with gym owners. So DM us on Facebook. If you want to talk through it more or figure out some ways to like strategize on how to get you from not being burnt out and getting some help. Obviously we want to do that with you with gym reinforcements. We got sales reps, we got digital marketers that can do these things for you. But at the end of the day, it starts with you deploying what we talked about, right? Managing your team, managing your expectations, managing your, your energy, your calendar, you know, your, your vacation time, like all these things will help you unlock that energy so you can stop being burned out and get back to being fired up. So with that, we'll let you guys get out of here. Thank you. And we will see you next week. Gym owners, I want to officially invite you into my free Facebook group just for you. It's called Fitness Sales Made Simple. And essentially, I'm sharing free resources in there all the time to help you grow your business. Doesn't matter to me if you ever work with gym reinforcements, you can gather all kinds of cool content and tools and resources. We have free webinar trainings, free guides, free lead magnets, free scripts that you can send out to make sales and it's all in the group. So go ahead and click on the link in the description and you could get inside and get these free tools. See you on the inside.